Hey, everybody see me? Welcome, welcome, bienvenidas to Walker's Legacy Latinx Women Entrepreneurs Digital Summit. Woo! I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I am so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you with us. We have an incredible lineup for you. We hope that we will today inspire you, motivate you, and empower you. Today isn't just about celebrating the incredible legacy of Latinx women entrepreneurs. It's about community. Juntas somos más. Together we are so, so much more. We come together to share learning and to feed each other's fire. And to kick us off is appropriately the charismatic Mark Madrid, CEO of Latino Business Action Network of Stanford's Latino Entrepreneurship Initiative. Take it away, Mark. Oh, thank you very much, familia. Amazing Latina entrepreneurs, Latinas and Latina allies. Great morning or afternoon to all. Greetings from the Silicon Valley in Northern California. I say it every day and I'll say it now. It's the highest honor imaginable to serve Latina entrepreneurs across the US and Puerto Rico. And let me make my point crystal clear. I would not be here without a wonderful Latina, my mom. I'm Mark Madrid, CEO of the Latino Business Action Network, a national 501c3 nonprofit that collaborates with Stanford University to advance the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Initiative. I'm absolutely energized to be with you on this Feel Good Friday because this virtual amphitheater and Facebook Live is filled with powerful Latinas. I have a few precious moments uh, today with you and to address you. And I just have three points. Number one, why the heck is a man in this lineup? Number two, I will discuss Latina power. And number three, I'll circle back to Latina influence. So number one, why am I here? I'm here because of dear friend and visionary and Walker's Legacy founder and CEO, Natalie Madera Cofield. This is a relationship, familia, that runs deep. I met Natalie, uh, it was almost eight years ago when I was serving as president and CEO of the Greater Austin Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And she was serving as CEO of the Greater Austin Black Chamber of Commerce. We had instant chemistry and we made a promise back then that we were going to be the example of showing Austin, Central Texas and the state of Texas, the power of black and brown united. It was not only the right thing to do, but it made excellent business sense. And that we would respect cultural nuances while accentuating our commonalities and going to battle juntos. Then life happened, to be honest with you, and we both turned our attention to national leadership roles, and I thank God that we were reunited. So we're back together, and we are making good on that promise, uniting in the name of entrepreneurs of color, specifically women entrepreneurs, understanding that working together, we are unstoppable. And through this strategic partnership between Walker's Legacy and Elban, we will amplify and catalyze the collective and powerful voices of women entrepreneurs of color with corporate America, with governmental entities of all levels. And we will amplify certification and procurement and educational opportunities together, all while demolishing roadblocks and barriers together. We will also join forces on research as we both value data and its power. That's our promise to you. And, and now to my second point, hashtag Latina power, specifically when it comes to entrepreneurship. According to the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Initiative, Latina owned businesses, get this, increased by 87% between 2007 and 2012, 87%. And today, 42% of Latinx entrepreneurs and small businesses are led by Latinas. 42% of Latinx businesses today across the US and Puerto Rico led by Latinas. Indubitably, we should all, we should all be comforted and just so excited about that. And one day, very soon, that percentage is gonna be 51%. Oh, you know, what I've seen, uh, honestly, familia, during COVID-19, from Latina entrepreneurs specifically is truly extraordinary. Inspiration in action, role model behavior as demonstrated by the almost 200 alumni 
of our Stanford Scaling Latino program. Like Maria Palacio. Maria Palacio, well, at the break of the pandemic, she called me and she said, Mark, I lost 90% of my revenue in one day. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So there was a strength in her vulnerability. All she did was convert and transform from B to B to B to C. And she's made other structural enablements, including empowering technology in the fullest capability. And now Maria has been covered on Forbes. She was our first entrepreneur from our scaling program to be featured on Good Morning America. That is the power of Latina entrepreneurship. And you're gonna hear from another rock star of, Lat of our Latino scaling program, Beatriz Acevedo, a juggernaut. You're gonna hear from her soon. Which brings me back to my third point, Latina influence. I have to give a special shout out to the Latinas of the LBAN and Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Initiative ecosystem. Our board members, Monica Mantia and Rosa Santana, our LBAN director, Jennifer Garcia, our LBAN fellow, Marianne Garcia, and our Stanford GSB uh, lead research analyst, Marlene Orozco, as well, shout out to our woman of color, uh, Stanford GSB research analyst, Inara Tarek. And of course, our ecosystem of Latina entrepreneurs that have graduated from our Stanford Latino um, ecosystem. I'm so excited. And once again, I also have to come back to the Latina that made this life possible, my mother. It reminds me of all the challenges that you all have overcome. I remember as a kid, keep in mind that my mom is of humble beginnings. She grew up in a cinder block home um, with you know, no material items. And all my mom did was raise her family and she helped my dad you know, transform from the cotton fields where they pick cotton to run a thriving family owned business, a welding business. So I remember when I was about five or six years old that my mother, she finally had the means to do so, but she wanted to make her seal, herself feel good. So she went to a boutique store in our hometown, which is in one of the most conservative, uh, conservative areas of the country. And right away, I noticed that the eyes were peeled on her, not in a good way. The eyes anticipating that my mom was going to shoplift. So they called the cops on my mother. And you know what, instead of having the eyes peeled in that light, those eyes should have been proud of the Madrids that were job creators. They should have been proud of a new customer. They should have been proud of a new loyal customer, somebody that could refer other new customers. Instead of what they saw was what happened with the cops arresting my mother. Of course, my mother kept her dignity as she always does. And so I submit for your consideration the United States of America, the American economy, our Latina entrepreneurs, they are new customers, they are job creators, they have emotional intelligence, they are leading this country, and they are the beacon of not only the present, but of the future. Thank you all for joining us today for this Latinx Digital Summer. You are incorporating and advancing digital technology you're implementing those into those businesses and you're showing this country what you're made of. God bless you all and bienvenidos.